Welcome to the 1040 tax simulator in Microsoft Excel. How's it going, everybody? It's, you know, it's just about tax time. Taxes are due mid-April. It's like 16th something. There's always weird holidays and weekends or whatever, but it's right, It's the first business day after the 15th every year, so um, on or after the 15th. So what we can do here is we can talk about this application I've built, and if you need to work on simulating your tax return, this thing is what I've developed for anyone who wants to just do it on their own and then you can use this information to use the fillable forms uh, that are available through the IRS website and and you can have a really good idea of what your return is going to look like and how everything's connected. I've spent, um, this is years in the making but I've spent a lot of the last week or so um, just going through every form that I can and adding them in here and programming them into this big cube and this is, it, it's really fun now because it's basically done except with a lot of caveats. Caveats are that anything with NYTS here means that I haven't added one of these forms yet. Like there's no form 8880. There isn't that uh, yet. It isn't in here. So whatever you would have to fill out when you fill out that form, you'd have to put that number here manually. I don't have that form connected. But I have a ton of other forms actually connected. These are the forms right here that we actually have in here. We've got all these forms and schedules. And um, and and then other stuff, you know, I'll add as as there's more interest and as people purchase this and want me to add schedules, I'll, I'll put the time and do that. But I can't do the entire tax code because it would take forever. So we'll just go one at a time. But how does this thing work and how easy is this? Well, watch this. So you've got the 1040, right? And we have all the links to the forms right here in this matrix sheet. So you're like, all right, I want to go to the 1040. You click the 1040, you're going to you're going to get the PDF. And instead of just p filling out the PDF and doing a lot of redundant numbers on here at first when you're trying to figure out what your return is, the tax simulator in Excel asks you only the relevant questions and does a formula wherever a formula can be done and connects it to all the other uh, applicable schedules and forms when there's another number. So the color scheme is as follows. If it's a dark fill, back fill, it's black in the fill and there's no, you're not supposed to do anything. It's either a formula or you're not supposed to touch it. If it's clear, then, then there are questions that need to be answered or amounts that could or could or should be entered in some of the blanks. So let's start doing it. I'll show you how a simple return looks and how you can simulate stuff, and then you'll be on your way. And if you want to purchase this, go to KenBraverman.com or follow the link. It's I'm going to make it $49, $49, and I will do more work on it as people purchase it and ask me to, to work on some of these schedules that need to be added. Now, that being said, what's your filing status? I'm single. At any time in 2021, did you receive, sell, exchange, otherwise acquire virtual currency? Yeah, I did a little bit of Bitcoining on Coinbase, sure. Someone can claim me as a dependent? No, I don't think so. I'm too old. Blindness. I'm not blind yet, but almost. Uh, there's no blindness exemptions. Number of dependents that qualify for tax credit? I don't think that's, I think that's zero there. No number of dependents, let's say it's a zero. Wages, salaries, and tips. Let's say I made $100,000 this year. Big six-figure winner. Okay, I say I got paid that on my W-2 from some company that I worked for. There's all these other questions you could answer. Okay, all these other questions here. And it shows you what schedule and what form you're work, uh, what, what part of the description or of the section of the form that you're working with. So we're just going to keep going as soon as this is a really simple return. Are you going to itemize your deductions? There's a question about that, right? Talk about itemizing deductions. It's right around here. There's charitable, charitable contributions and then there's standard deduction or itemized deduction. Well, if you wanted to itemize your deductions and you don't have, you don't want to use the standard, you can just jump to Schedule A, and all of a sudden you have questions. What was your medical bills this year? Uh, state and local income taxes, right? Like, what were these numbers? Um, whatever they are, and you'll see if if your actual standard deduction is bigger than your itemized deduction, and it'll put the right one in, in the amount right up here. Okay. In this case, it's still the standard deduction, so we're just going to leave that. Now, let's su assume that my employer did the right thing and pulled out you know, a, an amount of money from my paycheck on my W-2. That's the federal income tax withheld. Guess what? Your return could potentially be done, and I would owe $8,500. Yikes. And it would be just done. Some people's returns are that easy. And you can then open up in the pivot uh, return sheet here. You can look at what the values are for all of these categories. And you can see that, um, you know, amounts you owe end up showing total payments. Where's the amount that you owe? Tax withheld. 
Matt, you have 37. And you can resort all this stuff too. Um, if you just want to do it all by number, you can go into the field list here and grab the line description, put it like this, and then sort by line description. And I think that'll work almost. It kind of resorts stuff in a weird way a little bit. Um, but there's just so much you can now do with this completely, um, you know, completely just, it's awesome now. It's incredible. Taxes, credits. Oh yeah, see this part actually goes above something. So you got to move these things around and you can actually move these sections of the forms like up and down. That's what I'm going to do here. Try to figure out where this stuff goes. Um, 34, 38, I don't know. We'll get it all in order. Point is, is this thing's incredible. And it'll only get better, and it's pretty much. I mean, it's really, it's usable enough to simulate um, a big, huge chunk of questions you might have. I mean, if you look at all the different forms that are in here, it was pretty amazing going through and seeing everything that's available in the tax code. Right? You got foreign money, you got employee business expenses, child dependent care expenses. There's all these crazy child tax credit stuff, which actually is in there, by the way. The 8889, I believe, is what it's called. Let's see, no, not not that one. It's um. I'll show you where it is. It's the, the child tax credit one. And it's going to be a jump. 8812 maybe? No, yeah. The 8812 is enormous and has a bunch of different questions. And there's tons of different. You see all this black over here? It means there's all crazy formulas that were that were done. And, and look at how long this form 8812 is. Well, um, it, it's kind of fascinating to, to go in and look at all this stuff and see what is available. And... And it's just, it's all in one place and these hyperlinks all work to the PDF. So you can just, if you wanted to open up what that, the uh, 80, uh, God, where was 8812, right? 8812, so many numbers. Um, where'd you go? You can open it up, you can see what that entails. And there's still parts of that. There's worksheets at the bottom that I haven't even programmed yet because it's so enormous. There's, there's additional worksheets within the instructions that I still need to do. So the text code is, is laboriously long, but it, it is something that's quantifiable and can be done. And the amount that's in here is going to do 90%, 90, 95% of people's returns would be able to be done with what is in here. And more special case scenarios you can build in and, and program off this if you want to use this as some type of you know, financial planner or something when you want to estimate someone's tax liability at the end of the year, because this essentially will, will work good, you know, for this year, the tax code probably doesn't change that much year to year, at least in terms of simulations. So uh, this is this really was super helpful. So when you just change your filing status, everything changes, right? So as a single person, let me just show you quickly what that looks like. All right, we're talking about um, this amount that we owe, right? Amount you owe, right? So this number here, we should almost highlight it because it's it's a number that everybody cares about. Um, it's either the refund or or the uh, the refund or the amount you owe, right? So you highlight. So this in this case, you owe eighty five hundred nine dollars if you're a single status. Well, what if you are married instead? And, and this is all the same money, you know, one job there. Well, guess what happens? Instead of owing 8509, you just click refresh. You owe $2,000. You save that much for being married. So everybody go get hitched. All right. Good luck. Enjoy taxes. And if you want to purchase, go to campbellbermond.com. Good luck. May your taxes be easy.